Sheffield dominated the first leg of the Challenge Cup semi-final, scoring after 12 seconds and leading by five at the end of the first period. The lead now stands at six heading into this second leg, so Coventry will need to score at least seven to have any chance of progressing, and they've only managed five in four games against the Steelers so far this season. Anthony Marone and his perfect 10-0 record get the starting goal and two Steelers make their debut. Young D-man Sam Cooper on a two-way from the Steel Dogs and new American forward, number 19, Patrick Harper, who's joined from South Carolina. The Blaze are without Tolberg, Cook and Shearer and in need of a miracle to stop the Steelers making the final. A couple of decent opportunities for Coventry as mm. well in those three shots, a couple of deflections, a couple of opportunities that netminder Marone has had to come up and make a save with, so... They're not just letting it go easily, that's for sure. Backdoor play for Jones! His first of the season here in the Challenge Cup semi-final second leg. Sheffield play this play around really, really well. Coventry just go to, go, to a, go to sleep here a little bit. You see Simpson up high and Allen down low, but nobody picks up Sam Jones coming in from that offside. And Pretty good placement of the shot there. Netminder is trying to get the glove up and over and his body over and he puts it over the back. That puck will roll along the blue line and stay in. Now it won't, it's been poked free. And here's a break on for Curran. He's in on Marone. Oh, and he didn't Excellent quite get play. the shot off that he wanted because Ciampini was right on his tail. What a fantastic play by Ciampini to lift the stick. No hooking penalty, no nothing there. Just a nice little stick. And that there. drops for Allen and it's deflected and Kent will cover up. Yeah, it was never liner coming off the roll of the blue line, I think. Just sort of bobbled the puck and tried to make the play. But right here you see, oh, he just tries to make a backhand pass, but Champini gets on his horse, gets back, and that's a perfect little stick lift. Never in a million years in my books are you going to call that as a penalty. That's a, that's a perfect play, a guy checking back hard, and it would have been a pretty harsh to call anything on that. Spellacy with options inside. Dudek. Puck just gets by Spellacy. And the Blaze committing forward, it leaves space for the Steelers to try and counter. And cutting in front is Usula. Great oh, the save. save made! He flicked the leg up, did Kent. A little bit of a scorpion save there. And again, there's that little, what do you, that a Dominic Hasek, a little bit of a scorpion save? He was more of a, of a rollover, wasn't he? But yeah, getting it up and over. Tough. I don't, I don't think check. there was anything that Dominic Hasek couldn't well, save. Well, no, that's true too. But again, we, we say it time and time again. There's the poke check. He goes for the poke check. A good play, but misses it. And then he really has to struggle to uh, to try and redeem himself. Nichols loses out to Luciani. And Allen keeps it in the zone. Throws it towards net. He got a little tip. Rome was right behind it. And now Dowd. Driving from end to end. Drops the little pass off. Oh! And the little backhand through the five hole. Great work from Diffley. You see Robert Dowd here just push all the defensemen back. A little bit fortunate, but everyone goes to him. But Ryan Diffley up in the play as a defenseman. Just outbeats the poke check. How many times have we said that? If you get around that poke check, you pretty much can put the puck where you want. But Robert Dowd explodes up through the neutral zone and pushes everybody back. You see it here. Look how deep the Coventry defenseman on Brian Diffley just goes around the outside. And he's got that long reach. Diffley brings it back through the five hole. Usula gets it across, but no redirect on goal. Dowd had done well to get into position, but couldn't get his stick onto the puck. That's brought the crowd to life. It has again. Yeah, a little. It's funny what uh, what can bring people up to up on their uh, up on their hands and making some noise. Hazeldine loses out, little stick lift from Usula. That was oh, behind Dowd, but right. somehow he's kicked it onto his stick and then buried it past Kent. Well, Jonathan, they say you, you can't give a good player a bad pass anywhere within the stick, and you can watch Robert Dowd here, picks it off off one foot, off the other, and as soon as he gets on the stick, he takes the shot. Thompson tries to get a stick in there. Probably not the best thing for the net might have to, uh, to see that stick come in very, very late, but Robert Dow puts it in a good spot. We saw Tansy try to go to that side as well, stick side low. Again, you see the good turn over there. Hazeldine gets a stick lift. Robert Dow, one, two touch, bang, it's in the back of the net on the release. And the drive from Dowd. Allen. Kikali sticking right with him. Champini drops it off for Dowd. 
spin from Ciampini trying to get away from Spellis he throws it in front towards Dowd Puck is sitting there and the shot is blocked and the follow up isn't or no, is it no, no, no it's in the, the bar post, off the post kind of it. The horn sounds, but it didn't go in. It fooled me. Fooled everybody in the building, Jonathan. <laughs> Just off straight off the post and come straight back out. Some good hard work down there. I was just going to say Coventry did a good job battling out in front, not allowing an opportunity to come through. There is Cooper. Throws it back towards Neverlinen. Steel is leading by three goals to nil here in this Challenge Cup semi-final second leg. 9-0 on aggregate. And here goes Christo. And he scores! Something for the Blaze to cheer. Danny Christo, a goal against his old club. Yeah, Danny Christo coming in, heads up here all the way. I think Sheffield gets caught a little bit on of a change. Neverlina can't quite come across. Christo. Good little wrist shot. Glove side, I can't see if it just goes over the elbow as Marone doesn't look too happy that he was beat with that one, to be fair. Good shot, though, from Coventry to get her back here 3-1. Marone maybe just a little off his angle, maybe. We'll have a little better look at it here as it comes back through, and it looks like it almost goes around his body. Buck will come back into neutral ice. Watling shot just off target. Kept in the offensive zone by Neverlinen. He's under pressure from Ripley and needs a little bit of support. And gets it from Valorand. Back for Balmas. Oh, I think he's in his own teammate. That is a little bit of a stinger. Balmas has squeezed one in behind Kent. <laughs> Watling still struggling to get up and smile at about all the way. I think they just caught him in a a little bit of a soft area but you know we've seen Balmas absolutely rip shots before yeah, that was Valor on that time but Balmas here quickly you can see Kent just not quite square he's kind of flailing a little bit Balmas just sort of waits for him to move his arm and he puts it off the side of his rib cage I think but right there you see he's not square whatsoever he, I mean the netminder turns around Cooper Usula Crowd rises to its feet. The puck is out of the zone. Stewart trying to force his way through. The final few seconds of the second leg tick away. And the Sheffield Steelers confirm their place in the Challenge Cup final with a 10-1 aggregate victory over the Coventry Blaze. The Steelers are winners on the night, winners on aggregate, but they have one more game to go if they're going to be winners of the Challenge Cup. It's another man-of-the-match performance for Anthony Marone. He continues to be perfect in goal for the Steelers. Whenever he plays, the Steelers win. About a 5,633 here on a Wednesday night. A night of great celebration for Steelers fans everywhere. We have some chairs, we have some players. Oh, we'll need a fifth player if we're going to play some musical chairs. And here we go. <laughs> you can't let the man of the match not get a chair, that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> He's in to sit down. He's played a fine game yet again. It's a good night to be a Steeler into the Challenge Cup final. How are you feeling? Uh, it's feeling good, you know. I mean, uh, that was an important game. You know, even though we had a six-goal lead, we came out strong. The boys were playing hard to the last minute. They bar we barely gave them anything, so it was, uh, it was a good feeling to be out there and get that win. What was the message from the coaches in the build-up to the game? Because 
with a six goal lead is always going to be difficult perhaps to, to be as motivated as you might be for just any other normal game when the scoreline isn't so lopsided. Yeah, I mean, we have a big weekend coming up, so we kind of wanted to play good very well tonight so we can translate that into the weekend and be prepared for two big games. And the Steelers keep up their record of winning every game that you've started in. It's uh, quite impressive so far, the numbers you've been able to put up in your short time here. Yeah, I mean, the guys have been playing amazing in front of me. It's it's as simple as that. I mean, even tonight, they, they gave basically nothing. And, I, you know, we had a great night out there, so credit goes to them. I think the only thing that didn't go your way was the Eddie at the end. Surely the man of the match can't be left without a chair. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know I'm going to talk to Cole about that one. I was a bit pissed off. Now. <laughs> Firstly, Aaron, congratulations. Uh, Challenge Cup finalist. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you know, this is one of the goals that we set start of the season. Um, been a long process, but we got there. One more game here. Uh, be nice that it's at in this barn. Be pretty exciting. Atmosphere will be through the roof. Um, pretty business-like performance tonight. I thought that we did most of the heavy lifting last week, obviously, and just had to make sure that we managed that first period, didn't give them any life, no momentum, thought we started well, build that 2 nothing lead, and then the game was kind of, you know, set, set from there. Was it a little awkward coming into it with such a big lead? Yeah, you just, you know what I mean, you, you want to eliminate any risk. We decided to dress greener tonight as a backup just in case, um, you know, so we kind of took any, any of that kind of stuff out of the equation. And, uh, yeah, you, again, momentum's crazy in hockey, and they came back from a four-goal deficit in nine minutes in Belfast, so you just you don't want to give them any life. And we, we, we tried to play winning hockey tonight, um, still compete level high, thought we battled. Um, we got a couple guys in that room that set the tone every night, so it's – it's pretty easy for guys to follow, which is huge. Um, but, yeah, it was excellent, excellent night. The Challenge Cup is important to you. It's the competition you've won before, and good to be going back to the finals. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's about trophies, and, you know, um, like I said, this is one that we want to win. It'll be great to have it here at home. We don't know who we're going to play yet, play yet but, uh, you know, I thought we've played very, very good hockey, and, you know, if we're, we're at our best, I'm sure we'll be happy with that, the outcome there. Talk to us a little bit about the new signing, Patrick Harper. Made his debut today, only flew into the country a couple of days ago. Your early thoughts on, on him? Yeah, I mean, it, again, tough little sample size to go through here, but I thought in transition and in space, he's creative, will make plays, um, good on the power play. He, he, he's going to help us for sure. He, I, think, I don't think he'd been on the ice for a full week before he got here and with only two skates. Maybe he looked a little bit winded at the end of shifts, and um, but we'll get him up to speed here and, and kind of go from there. And a big night for young Cooper as well. He got some ice. Yeah, it was nice to see yeah. Sam. He's he's worked hard in practice every day. Um, you know, big, skates well, moves the puck, you know, very nicely. And I, I thought for the minutes he got tonight, he did a really solid job. A day off, but then you're up to Glasgow and uh, then back here. Busy yeah, times. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be in tomorrow. Um, you know, we don't want to go a day without a skate before the day before a game like that if we don't have to. So we'll be in for a light flush tomorrow. And kind of just dig into the details for the weekend but we know it's another huge one for us. Danny can you just give us your thoughts on the 60 minutes you've seen from your team tonight? Uh, you know I, I, I liked our work ethic you know it's it's very difficult to come into a second leg when you're down by six and um, obviously a bit beat up as well missing some key guys and but I liked their effort I thought we competed for 60 minutes uh, you know that's a heck of a team over there and um, you know obviously uh, Earn, earn their lead coming into the night and then and obviously played a good enough game not to you know give themselves a scare so um, but you know in terms of of the play you know I I thought we generated some decent chances I don't think we had a lot of quantity in terms of shots and, and where they were but we had a couple of good chances and, um, and and I thought for the most part we did a relatively good job but you know off the rush they're as good as anybody in the league and, and they're going to hit you at some point and as they did a couple of times but uh, look all in all um, we we let ourselves down in the first period of, of the first leg at home and and put ourselves in an impossible situation so um, but I liked their guys character at seeing it through and playing till the end. You get to play the Steelers team three more times in the league before the end of the season. 
Did you see enough from your team tonight that suggests that you can do some damage in those games? I think so. I, I mean, there's still some areas we need to clean up. You know, they're a team that just pushes the pace all night long. They push through, try to get in behind you. And, um, you know, you just got to make sure you stay above them. And I think we could probably be at times a little bit more physical against them. I think we just give them too much room to, to skate. But, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, the two previous times we've been in here, we've, you know, taken it to overtime. We had leads in those games. And um, I thought tonight, you know, like I said, I thought parts of our game were good, our, our work ethic was good and you know hopefully by the next time we see them we, we got some key guys back.